Hi everyone, Mike here from Bikes by Mike with another cycling related video. I'm downstairs back in the garage to review the most important accessory to your rooftop bike rack and that is the air deflector. In this case, the Thule Airscreen XT. Okay, let's get to it. Okay, just a bit about the setup here. This is a 2019 BMW 330i xDrive. On the roof, we have the BMW OEM crossbars, which we purchased from BMW and are branded BMW, but looking at posts, um, I know that they're actually made by Thule. And for the actual rooftop bike rack, I have here the Thule Upride bike rack. So everything here is stock, except for one thing. For the Thule Upride bike rack, it comes with uh, standard rear wheel mounts, which are fine for road bikes, mountain bikes, and gravel bikes. But for fat bikes, you need to buy the fat bike specific rear wheel mounts. So I bought two of those and I use those in the winter when I ride primarily my fat bike. So this video isn't about how to choose the perfect bike rack, but I am going to speak a little bit about it because I know some of you will say, well, if you didn't have a rooftop rack, you wouldn't need a wind deflector. So the two most popular bike racks on the market today are your rooftop rack, like what I have here, and hitch mount racks. Now, they both have their pros and cons, and neither is perfect. So you really need to find what fits your particular needs the best. But for me, when I chose a rack, I wanted a rooftop rack for a reason that is rarely ever mentioned in the reviews on bike racks and it has everything to do about the wake. So when air moving over a vehicle separated at the rear end, it leaves a large low pressure turbulent region behind the vehicle known as the wake. This wake creates a pressure drag which is responsible for creating an area of turbulent airflow. And since this turbulent area is so pronounced at the rear end of cars, it explains why you typically find that the back of cars are the most dirty part. Here's another car, a different car. This is an Australian Ford Falcon. The first thing I hope you'd all see straight away is how well the separation edge, the trailing edge of the trunk of the boot, how well that separation edge is, is working. Um, you can see the airflow must be attached coming down the rear window and onto the boot or trunk lid, but it separates at that point and that forms the upper edge of the wake. And this is the main reason I do not like rear hitch mount racks because it places your bike in the dirtiest part of the car's airflow and your bike gets much more dirty than when it's positioned on the roof of the car where the airflow is much less turbulent. Now you can buy rear end tapers that will help to reduce the amount of turbulent air and drag, but it's not going to completely eliminate the wake. Now I've driven from Toronto to Asheville, North Carolina with my bike on the roof rack at least three or four times and sometimes in really heavy rain. So a long trip where it really tests out how well the rack works, both in terms of functionality and in terms of noise, but also in terms of how dirty your bike gets. And the bike, when it left and when it arrived, was in exactly the same condition. So it, it arrived spotless as if it had been completely cleaned. Now it is true that for rooftop racks, you're gonna get more bug splats but if you buy yourself a bike bra, it, it totally eliminates that issue. So by comparison, I've taken my bike on a hitch mount bike rack from Kemore, Alberta to Moab, Utah in the United States. So another long trip of about 1900 kilometers and it left clean, but when it arrived in Moab, it was completely filthy. So road dirt and grime was driven into every component of the bike and really required uh, a really good cleaning to, to get it back to its, its newly washed condition. So without doubt, from uh, an ability to protect your bike and keep it clean, in my opinion, nothing beats a rooftop rack. So I purchased the Thule Airscreen XT wind fairing off Amazon for $190 Canadian. Most of the wind deflectors sold today have pretty much a universal fit, but I thought I'd go with the Thule just to be absolutely sure it would fit my Thule crossbars. The air screen comes in four sizes, extra large, large, medium, and small. So make sure to choose a size that will fit the width of your car. 
you want a length that will fit just inside the vertical feed of the crossbars. And for me, this was a size medium, which is 96.5 centimeters in length. So attaching the windscreen is pretty easy. It connects by way of these polypropylene straps. So it's a universal type of latch system for pretty much any crossbars, but certainly for all or most of the Thule crossbars, you won't have any issue. Thule advertises that it's a tool-free installation, but I didn't find that to be the case. I found that this is kind of a clumsy way to attach it to the crossbars. It was hard to do with just my hands. I needed pliers to pull the straps tight when installing them, and then to remove the straps to release the clutch. Uh, for most of them, I just couldn't do it easy enough with my fingers. I had to use pliers for that as well. So this isn't a huge issue if you plan to put the air screen on your car and pretty much leave it there. But if you're looking for an air screen that's easily removable and you want to take on and off your car regularly, then I would say this is not the wind deflector for you. You should look for something that has a better um, mounting or latching system to it. Okay, now we're to the important part of the video. How does the deflector perform? And I have to say, I've, I've known about deflectors for many years and I've used a rooftop bike rack for at least 15 years, but I just never thought of buying one because I didn't think it would do that much. Um, you know, I understand its design is to deflect the air over the crossbars, but for most rooftop bike racks, like the upride that I have here, it's so beefy and when you put the bike on, it's even less aerodynamic. So I never thought that deflecting air above the crossbar would be enough to reduce the wind noise and to reduce the whistle from the crossbars at all. Um, I just thought that it was caused by the whole, whole assembly itself. But I was proven wrong with that. So I was really pleasantly surprised at how well the Thule air screen works. So normally without the deflector, at speeds above 40 kilometers an hour, with or without a bike on, I would get really high pitch whistling from, from, presumably from the crossbars. And it got progressively louder with an increase of speed. And also with an increase of speed, not only did you get the whistling, but you also get a lot of wind noise and air turbulence. But when I put the windscreen on, it was a noticeable reduction in both the whistling as well as the wind noise. I would say that whistling at any speed, so 40 kilometers right up to say 120, 130 kilometers an hour, was entirely eliminated. So not you couldn't detect any whistling whatsoever. And for uh, air turbulence and wind noise, it substantially reduced that as well. So it did feel more aerodynamic by using the wind deflector. I'd say overall, in terms of general wind noise, it reduced wind noise by at least 50 or 60% in my opinion. And the whistling from the racks, this is without the air screen on, just the crossbars and the bike rack, it's just starting to, to pick up. So if I can get up to, if this tra traffic eases and I can get up to 50 kilometers an hour, it should start whistling quite loudly. So now I'm going 50 kilometers an hour and I can definitely hear the whistling. This is back to going 40 kilometers an hour and it's definitely strong whistling sound. Even at this very low speed. This is going 90 kilometers an hour and the whistling isn't that bad, but maybe that's because there's some crosswinds. But uh, there's still a fair amount of, um, not whistling, but wind turbulence noise. So this is with the Thule air screen on, and of course the bike rack and crossbars, and then going 43 kilometers an hour, 45 kilometers an hour, and there's absolutely no whistling at all, and a lot of reduced wind noise. So definitely, definitely a huge improvement over not having the deflector on. Now we'll test the air screen with highway driving. 
going 90 kilometers an hour. Again, no whistling at all. Just a bit of wind turbulence, but much less than without the deflector. <laughs> And that's basically all I have to say about the Thule Airscreen XT wind fairing. If you have a rooftop rack, I'd strongly recommend you getting a wind deflector. And certainly the Thule is one good option that you should look at. I hope some of this has been helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please pass them along. That's all I got for today, folks. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And if you're not a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe as allows me to produce more content for all of you. See you next time. Happy rolling.